Let me run through with you the basic idea of how a transform works. We have three different things going on in transformation. We have an input XML file, and I'm referring now to the diagram that's on your page. An input XML file, a processing <coughs> XML file, and an output HTML file. At the very highest level, what's going on is the processing XSL file is reaching into the instance file, the, the uh, input file, the instance file, grabbing values out of it, doing things with those values, and from it producing the HTML. All three tags are really just different varieties of XML formatting. In the input file, we have uh, in the instance file, the input file, we have XML tags with values in them. Those tags can be, as you know, elements and attributes. In the processing file, we have two different kinds of things. We have XSL commands inside of HTML tags. And you'll see later when we do a, an example of a simple transform exactly how that works. But what I want you to see is that the processing file combines transforming commands with HTML tags so that in the output, the transforming commands are turned into values so that the transform file, the XSL file, uses its commands to reach into the input file and put values in between the HTML tags that are already in the transform file. So that transform file consists of two basic different things. One are XML commands, or sorry, XSL commands, and the other are HTML tags. The XSL commands go away in the long run, the HTML tags don't. The HTML tags stay in there and wrap around whatever the XSL commands deliver to create an HTML file. Okay, so the basic idea is you have an input XML file and you've been working with instances, these input XML files. Notice, by the way, the schema isn't in here. We assume that the input file is valid, but there's nothing that the transform does to assure that it's valid. It just assumes that you've done that work before. So no, no schema in this picture, just a transform in an instance creating an output file, in this case, an HTML file. And we know that the output can be other things besides HTML. Um, in fact, it could be lots of other things besides HTML. Sometimes we transform to make PDF files. Sometimes we transform to make uh, word files, for word processing files. Sometimes we transform to just create text files. All sorts of different things. But in this class, we're really going to we're really going to focus on um, HTML as the output because uh, that's a the most useful and b probably the most familiar to you of the, all the outputs that we could have chosen to use. Okay, so. What we say is that we're applying the transform to the instance. We apply the transform to the instance to create the output file. Now that's a, that's a kind of a techie way of talking about it. Another way that I really like to talk about it, and for our, and for our, um, uh, for our purposes really, the more interesting and useful way to talk about it is that the transforms are views of the instance. So you could, after creating a, a, a nice instance with lots of stuff in it, just deliver that instance to the, um, to your audience, right? Just send it to them, email it to them or whatever, and they look in it and they see everything they need to see because it's all nicely well formatted. Well, not exactly. Right? It's gonna take you all quarter just to get to the point where you're comfortable looking at these instances, and so it's not something that an end user would wanna see. Instead, an end user wants to see some view of it, some part of it that's in a nice format, like for example, an HTML page. An HTML page is an end user viewable form where the XML file, the instance file, is not an end user viewable form. The transform is what makes the difference. It, it's what creates the good looking, the, 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 the user friendly look and feel of a portion of the XSL file. So part one is the transform is making it decent looking for the user. Part two is that the transform is only selecting some of the information in an in a input file. For example, if our instance is representing 10,000 movies, the transform may only select one movie out of that and give the end user a view of only one movie. So it cuts down the amount of information in the instance sometimes very drastically. So we can create a view of the information that's well formatted and also very selective, only takes a certain part of the information that's in the instance. Um, the next thing to talk about is um, what exactly in our information structure terms is going on there. In our information structure terms, what's happening is that the transform is responsible for creating a view of some portion of our structure. Now you should know by now that our structure basically consists of access structures, which we haven't talked so much about yet, and information types, which we've been talking about so far. So when we create a view, structurally, what is it we're creating a view of? We're creating a view of an information item. One movie, for example, is an information item. There are 10,000 movies in our system, 
and each movie is one item of the type movie. So we're going to create a view, a full view, with all the information about that information item. Or we might create a partial view, just a little bit of the information about one movie. Maybe the picture and the you know, title and a paragraph of description or something like that. A different view of the same information or the same view of a different piece of information. We can have a full view of movie one versus a full view of movie two, or we can have different views of the same information, the full view of movie one versus the partial view, view of movie one. Now in addition, it can render or transforms will render for us access structures. So I have in my instance a hierarchy, and I know we haven't learned that much about them yet, but we will. I have a hierarchy or an index or something like that, but it's tagged in a way that isn't really very useful to the end user. I'm going to use a transform to transform it into an HTML expanding and contracting table of contents or an HTML expanding menu system. And then the user can use that menu system to navigate through, for example, my different movies. Okay, so the transform reaches into the, ex it reaches into the instance file and wraps the values of the instance file into, in our case, HTML tags to produce a good looking view, a good looking page of one information item in any view you want, full view, partial view, whatever, and or, and, or one access structures, for example, a hierarchy or an index or something like that. Okay, the last thing to talk about in transforms is that transforms are programs. They're doing a lot of work. In addition to just simply reaching in and getting values, there's all sorts of other programming-like commands in them. So they're call, it's called a declarative language. It's not like a lot of the language you might, you, you, languages you might have encountered. Um, it's a little different, and in fact, it's kind of a little, you know, from the standpoint of, a, of someone who's programmed for a long time, it takes a little while to get your hands around it. There was, for a number of years, I just didn't think that transforms were a very good programming language. I've actually come around a lot now to realize that they have their place and that they, what they do, they do very well. It's just that they don't do very much. They're really responsible for presentation, and so within the bounds of presenting a nice looking page, transforms can do pretty much everything you want, but outside those bounds, which you often want to go to as a programmer, they're not very good at all. So they are programmers, they are, diff they are programs, they are difficult, and for the less tech among you, you'll see very little of the real, the real difficulty of the transforms. You'll really be working sort of on the surface of the transforms. For the more tech people, you'll get a little bit more in depth, but even for the more tech people, we won't go nearly into the depth that you could in the programming language and the, uh, the, the logic and the syntax of a transform.